Hello and welcome, my name is Jessica Jem. In today's video, I tried out animating in Ibis Paint. Not sponsored. Ibis Paint is the art software that I use most, and am most comfortable with on my iPad. Not long ago, they came out with an animation feature, and I hadn't tried it yet. But I was reminded when I saw a video about it about a week ago, and figured I'd see what it had to offer. I decided to animate the character Volpez from our Celestia D&D game since it's the player's birthday soon. To start off, I did a very rough layout sketch for the potential motion. Volpez is a character who has quite a lot of issues, and I thought it could be interesting to show a moment of vulnerability, followed by the realization that someone noticed, resulting in them playing up a villainous persona to avoid thinking about or exposing their actual feelings. While working on it, I decided to combine the last two motions that I had sketched out, the hair push and the hand up with a smile. I did a separate sketch of the character as a proportion reference, though the style definitely didn't end up quite the same. Still good to have, and I think it turned out cute too! I went with a textured brush that had slight pressure variation. I tried not to be too precious with it though because I wanted to be a bit quicker with this one. It didn't work out that way, but it was worth a try. <laughs> I didn't make the sketches very detailed, or detailed at all, so a lot of that was left up to the line art phase, which may not be the best way of doing it, but I've only animated a couple of times, so I'm not aware of the best process for me quite yet. I had quite a bit of fun with this though, so I may try animating some more small things in the future. I did my best to stay on model and keep everything the right size and in its place, as you do. And I think overall I did a decent job at that. I added a couple of extra frames throughout, but only one had to be completely drawn from scratch as the others were just slight variations on already existing poses. When I got to the hair, I tried to block out the shapes with a larger brush, which definitely helped for the first one. But after that, I deleted them all and continued animating it step by step like I had done with her head. So that was a little silly, but still worth a try. It was really fun to figure out the flow of the hair, as well as the slight bounce that I got to put in. And an odd detail that I really like is the way that the little top hairs in the bun move. It's kind of a weird thing to notice, but hey, you always have that one part that catches your fancy. For her eyes, one is a black void, and one is bright blue. I really liked the way the cute full black looked for the first part, but I thought the blue would work better for the second, so even though there's not really a reason for the eye to change, it's artistic liberty at work. For the color work, I did one section at a time for all the frames, since the way it works is when you switch frames, it stays on the same layer that you last left it on. I don't really like that it doesn't auto-add the new layer you make in one frame to every other frame because it makes it a bit annoying to go in and add and select it manually every time, but overall the animation process was pretty smooth. I really got into a flow state when working on the colors, and to help with that I fully tested coloring the first frame so I could choose how I wanted to render the whole thing. I went with mostly flat colors, but did add variation on some of the line art and the skin to add some life to them. After that, I just added the final touches like cleanup, the eye makeup, and eye and hair highlights. I'm really happy with how the motion turned out, and I think she's super cute. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the animation process. If you enjoyed this video, please grant me a like, and if you'd like to see some more of my art, subscribe to join me. That's all for now, so farewell and have a wonderful day.